So we've covered all that stuff, and we are at soil blocks. Do people want to know about soil blocks? What are they? I can show you what they are, <laughs> and we'll talk about why I like them, what their advantages and disadvantages are. Where are they here? One of these things here? I'm missing it. It's the, what? Soil blocker down there? No, I have, I have a set of soil blocks started with onions in them. And then, oh, here they are. Basically what they are is you have these little compression machines and actually the, the McEnroe potting soil is originally designed to be a soil block mix. You don't put the perlite in it. All you got to do is wet it and press it and you have the soil blocks. See them? Okay. Now what's cool about the blocks is the bigger blocker makes a hole that these plugs fit right in. So you step them up right into the next thing. Okay. What's the advantage? No transplant shock whatsoever, and actually a bigger volume of soil in a block than there is in almost any cell pack. Because cell packs are, packs are tapered, so you're getting more soil, so they do better. Is this what you call a cell pack? This is a cell pack, yeah. Okay. And they're all tapered, see? Yeah. You know, not much, but enough that you actually, but over the whole distance of the cell, there's going to be less soil. Pat, will you show the camera? How do you water them? That's soil block. You water them carefully. <laughs> I used to make clocks and then I quit because the watering washed all the dirt down in the crack. Right, what I, what I do is mist them. Yeah. I got a mister on that. Oh. I, you get them well moistened yeah. and then you just keep them moistened and they, they do fine. A mister works great, you know? So basically that little red thing is what I made these with. The big one, you make the same mix. It's basically the macro soil, which we're going to look at in a minute, right? Very wet. And you just compress them and then they hold together. That's it. Do we need a demo or is this good enough? Um, a description. So description. You have, have a pile of soil and you. Push a pile it of very wet soil. And you push it on there. Like press it on there. And then you push. You press it down, right? And then you pick it up. They stay in. You come over here and you press it again and drop them in. Okay. You drop it real close. You get close down into it, you know? And of course, I want to fit a lot in, so I put them really close to each other. Okay. You know? And really, this is less than ideal. It's actually better to do them on something with no sides because they're easier to reach. You know, I just didn't have anything, you know. Um, people do them on boards and things like that, you know. And then that's just a bigger version of it. And you'll see that inside this, there's the same size thing. Those are the same size as this. Uh, so you just take those and transfer them, you know. Do you know about what the pair of these like that about? Bigger one better. That's pretty pricey. That's about 150 bucks. Okay. Um, there are small. There, there, are, there are three or four that come in a littler one. It's like 25 or something, but the hand, the big hand one is more. In Holland, they're all mechanized. You know, Holland is really like, talk about having, they're growing together, they got it all figured out, and they do mechanized soil blocks. And there's a few places in America that have mechanized soil block machines. Something to consider is that if you're not making your own compost, you're using more potting soil, so your cost goes up if you're doing a lot. But for home, it's probably best practice. You know, it's probably best practice to do this. You can get real good at it. Your seedlings will be very happy when you get good at it, you know. Um, and at the soil blocks. Yeah. What's the benefit of using the larger one over the smaller one? Well, these guys here will not be as big as I want them by the time they've outgrown this. Yeah, okay. You know? yeah. So I then step them into that and they can go along. Meanwhile, I'm not filling up my entire greenhouse with things that are going to take forever to get to where I want them, you know. Yeah, okay. So what I really would... If I use these at all, maybe I'll play with it these, this year. Where I would do, would like to use those most would be things like beets mm -hmm. that don't really like transplanting as much. And I would put, since a, that's a big block, I'd put at least two seeds per cell. You know, beets often come up with a few plants anyways, mm -hmm. but I want at least three plants per block. And then I'd plant them so that they can grow away from each other. You know? And Elliot Coleman, by the way, has a formula in the New Organic Grower for making yeah. a, soil, a soil mix. Soil okay. block mix, you know, you can do it that way. Or you can buy the McEnroe, which is really originally designed as a soil block mix, and it mm -hmm. works perfectly. That's what this is made out of. You know? um, what I gotta say is, I don't really know why, except for maybe the watering is less even, that's probably it. But these are not up as fast as some of the other things, you know? Um, and and you, I can't really say why. You had it covered with a lid. Well, these didn't get covered till later. But some of the other ones got covered there were two bad. We didn't have enough lids, so only oh. some of them are coming up better than than this is, you know. But I can't say I don't. I would. I think it would be unfair to soil to soil blocks to say that it's because of the soil block. 
I suspect that's how it's been handled. You know, I've never really noticed that there was any problem with germination with soil blocks. I've been quite happy with it. You know, um, except for one thing. You know, and that could be it. Because I'm worried about the integrity of these. Usually, what I do when I make, when I'll show you in a moment, right? When I plant seeds, is once they're all in the packs, I come by and firm them really well, and that gets you good soil contact, which means good water. You know, water motion. Seeds can't, they don't have roots, they can't get water. They're, they're counting on capillary action to get water, you know. So I bet that's what it is. I bet you these seeds are floating too much because I'm afraid to push them down, you know. Hmm. So that's my, that's my suspicion, you know. It has a dimple in it, I wonder. Mm -hmm. um, just, and it has a little bump. Dimple in it, yeah. Yeah, to that's hold the seed. To the seed in it. And yep. then you can just... Oh, yeah. I love it. I was thinking, this. oh, do you have to do a toothpick and dig a little hole in it? No, but no, you don't. It's right no, there. no, it's, it's set up to go. Yeah, yeah. Oh. And it's easy. And and you don't use your finger to press the seed down in this little hole. I haven't, and I think that's why my germination is slower. Oh, I see. Okay. You know, I think I should probably what I should do is top this off, and really what I probably top it off with would be vermiculite, yeah. fine vermiculite, because I don't want these, I don't want the plants to grow into each other. You know, the vermiculite will not encourage the plants growing together, oh, yeah. but they still give it a nice smooth surface and I could take something that was the same size as this flat and press the whole thing evenly and the vermiculite would carry the pressure yeah. into the hole, yeah. you know, because I don't want to come through and press each one with my finger. I'd press them too hard, yeah. plus they're real small, I'd be real slow, yeah. you know, whereas with these guys, and let's do one now. And they grow right up through the vermiculite. Oh, yeah. And then, and then lifting them out, the vermiculite would just fall away. Fall away, away. yeah. My, vermiculite's my my preferred. We just haven't gotten a bag. It's my preferred topping. You know, it, it keeps the light out. You know, things like onions moisture have down. to have darkness to germinate. Years ago, I was doing an onion project with a friend, and I just read Elliot Coleman, and he said that he puts the seeds on top and doesn't cover them, and the extra oxygen speeds germination. I tried it with onions, total failure. Hmm. I got about three or four onion seedlings per flat. Pop those we'll step into. Step right up to it. Yeah. Do these blocks fit? You put them right back in into whatever your your flat. Yeah, they'll work in any flat. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. As opposed to you wouldn't drop them into something with cells. No, no, I would not. There's no point. No, no point orange. whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. Um, and indeed, you part of what this does is if there's that little space between them, they tend to root prune a little bit because they're not quite touching. Right. And if they're against a wall, they don't root prune. They wrap around. It's like right. they're hitting rocks, you right. know. Whereas if they got air, they kind of don't grow any further. Right. You know. So I wouldn't do that. You know? I just put them right back in the same thing. Kind of like those cloth growers that useful plants use. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I like soil blocks a lot. I just brought these down for this workshop. We haven't had them. I think we'll play with them this year. Mm -hmm. The jury's out on what the what the gang thinks. We'll see. You know. So far, people are just looking at me like I'm weird. You know. Oh, um, okay. What's that, Pat? You know. So I got to prove to them that they're worth something. You know. Another advantage is that when there's no fossil fuel, there will be no plastic no trays. No plastic trays, yes. That's right. So yep. you'll be set to go. Yep. Oh, and if you have your hardware, expensive. if you don't have your hardware, there's local blacksmiths, blacksmiths that can make you that pretty fast. You know? um, and we're always going to have metal, you know? <laughs> um, if only because we have junkyards. What if, uh, would cookie, cookie tins be good? Well, they good? rust. Well, a treated yeah, one would be you're fine. Right, you know? you're right, you're right. You could find, I mean, you go out in our world, and there's something being thrown away that's perfect for this. Right. You know, I mean, probably every other block on any given th garbage day. You know. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm a thrift shop. Yeah, yeah, thrift, thrift shop. shop you'll find the old-fashioned ice cube trays. Kind of look like that, don't they? Maybe. Yeah, I mean, I mean countless, yeah, maybe, maybe countless you ways to go. Them, you know. Pack the soil um, into ice cube trays and just flip it if you didn't have the. Okay, so moving right along. <laughs> Spray it with some, maybe, I don't know. That's moving right yeah, along. Yeah, you wouldn't need it. Well, yeah. Patrick. Yes. But it might work. You're out of here, Mom. Remember the old metal one that came up? What are you going over to Grand... Oh, you go, go look at chicken houses. Chicken I want to report. I want to report on chicken tractors when you come back, Brad. Okay. Thanks for coming, everybody. Good to meet all you. Thank, Thank you for all the help, Rocco. I'll see you at yeah. the chicken thing now before yeah, the growers. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Okay. Looking forward to it. This okay. So good. We're probably just going to use the soil we made, but here's the mac and roll. I'm going to cut a bag open so you can all look at it, see why we like it so much. This is the potting soil. This is the stuff that we love. See, no, no pretty label, right? Right. 
Oops, sorry about that. What does a bag like that go? I think it was about seven bucks or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I forget exactly, something like something like that. And this it's is from ready. Wade's from Troy's. Now if you get it at fifth season, it's a couple bucks more. Yeah. And know? this is ready to go. You don't have to do the You mix per thing. you mix perlite in it though. Perlite. Yeah, you just That's mix right. perlite. That's right. You said that. One bag of this to a half of a five gallon bucket of perlite. Okay. And that gets you the same twenty percent kind of Excellent. mixture. When the yeah, and you could add the charcoal. And my guy, Rocco, he never measures it, he just adds it until it looks right. I measure, you know. We're all different, you know. I want to say measure that, Rocco, but I keep my mouth yeah. shut, you know. But I always measure it, so he knows I like to measure it. And you know, a half of a half a five gallon Traps. bucket. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know about this? This is the. Yes. Okay. Want to pass around? Look at it. Beautiful. It's got a bunch of different things in it. Mm. That's a good job on that. Careful. Not too bad. Um, nice. mm. No, I'm gonna have a bag. I'm gonna have bags of it pretty soon, so yeah, me too. I'll, I'll feel it then. It's pretty darn good stuff. I highly, highly recommend it. You know, call Wade right away and say when are you getting the mac and roll? Okay. Because I need to get a fire under his butt. You know. All right. He, this time of year, he doesn't have cash. Okay. Oh, nice. What size cells to start things in? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. Scott Paquin, Firefly Farm. He's a musician. He says, I always wanted to have a band called the 128s. <laughs> farmers would know what he meant. Mm -hmm. It's the most commonly used tray for farmers. You can get a lot of seedlings in it and get their pretty good size. You can see the seedlings. These, and I stepped those broccoli robs up to 72s. But you can see those broccolis, those lettuces, all those guys, they look pretty darn good still. Mm -hmm. And they're in 128s. Now, they stay much longer. They're starting to start going downhill. Mm -hmm. But... It takes a lot longer for them to go downhill with the mac and roll potting soil, especially with the char grow in it. Because mm. there's just more nutrition. You know, that's one of the things we've done doing trials. We've shown that you can actually hold your seedlings a little longer, which really helps farmers because sometimes it's raining and they can't get in the soil. You know, it's nice to be able to just look at them and say they're going to be okay. You know, um, what did you call that? A 128? A 128. There's 128 cells in it. You know, and Wade can get you a case of these for 70 bucks. If y'all bought them together, you know, 100, 100, so 70 cents each. Well, that was a couple of years ago. Who knows now? <laughs> but someplace in the ballpark, you know. He might also sell you a few. He probably will. And he marks things up hardly at all, you know. Um, I highly recommend them for things like lettuce and stuff. They're wonderful. Um, starting peppers and tomatoes using a heat table, I use a 288. Because I want to get a lot of them on there. And I'm confident that by the time they need to be stepped up, it's going to be warm enough that I don't have to be on the heat table anymore. How do you get them out of those plugs? Okay, everybody's got that question. <laughs> I have so many different tricks for this. Um, They're so small. Even those are small, but it's a little easier to get them out of the larger one. Pencil eraser. Oh, he's <laughs> he uses his raspberries. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. All right, now, it, if it stays compacted. You got yourself a handy person. They get a bunch of these uh, dowels, they set them in a table, and you just go, and they all pop out. Ah. You, know? you only got to make it once. Have I made one yet? No, but someday, <laughs> someday, I'll get Greg to make one. And then you step them up. <laughs> so out of there, it's given it, they're stepped up. These have to be stepped up yeah. almost always. I've started yeah. leeks at this size. I've started lettuce at this size. My friend, Yana Fishman, I once gave her a flat of this, right? It was her first experience at winter growing. It was like November. I said, I got too many of these. You want one? She said, oh. They're awful small. What am I gonna do with them now? I said, stick them in the ground. They'll grow. She put this stuff in the ground. She ate lettuce all winter, you know. And she still refers to, ever since you changed my life with the, you know, or turn, you know, turn my head around. Whatever she says, I forget. But you know, it was this revelation. She had tons of little seedlings, you know. Um, she put them in the ground. In a hot summer, summer weather, they might not have enough resources. They might dry out. But in the winter, when they don't dry out and stuff, the size works fine, you know. So I, I go directly in the ground with these sometimes, but it's pretty. Uncommon. Mm -hmm. How do you step them up? Step them up. You can step them up to this size. If I'm stepping up, I usually go to 72s, though. That's what stepping up is. Right. But what's I the see. procedure for, for so that you get soil contact between the new, the new Let's and the old? Let's do one. one. Let's do it, okay? 